not arrived. Oh, let your enemies be scattered from this house. Hallelujah. Who breaks the power of Oops. sin and darkness? Come on now. Who love is mighty and so much stronger. The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless? The King of glory, the King of all kings. This is amazing grace. This is a failing this love. This is unfailing love. That, that you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I might be set free. you done for me. Hallelujah! Santa! Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. yeah! Jesus! Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, Lord! Come on now! Who brings? Who, Who brings, brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory! The King of glory! The King of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in a holy brilliance. The King of glory, the King of all kings. Hallelujah! This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my crown. You would bear my cross. You laid down your life that I might be set free. Whoa, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Oh, you've done so much for me, Lord. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. And you would take my place. And you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Yeah. Amen, 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 amen. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. Glory. Welcome, Life Church of Visalia, California. 2022 and this day in August this is a historic day my God is up to something my God is up to breaking chains my God is up to setting the captive free my God said ask and you shall receive Woo! welcome family welcome Facebook friends and family 
this is a beautiful day in the house of the Lord. We get to worship him with our whole heart. We get to pour out our love to the man who died and paid the price so we could stand and be joined as heirs. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence. You know, Lord, we say, come, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit. But Holy Spirit is already here. Holy Spirit is in us. We bring the Holy Spirit. So today, Lord, it says, say, come, Holy Spirit. We're going to say, move, Holy Spirit. Move by your power. Move by your grace. Move. Break, keep breaking chains. Keep breaking. Keep putting the enemy in his place. You know, when a lion stands and roars those things that come against him and think he's sleeping and want to sneak up on him they run for dear life today deep inside of you let the lion of the tribe of Judah roar roar Woo! I'm telling you let him roar and you're going to see change in your life. You're going to see excitement in your life. You're going to see change in your family. In your finances. In your home, in your neighborhood. You know, the enemy is trying to bring defeat to the life church. I got a text this morning that Dorsey and Kevin won't be here. Though if they are, they're going to be late because their bank called them and said somebody used uh, their credit card. See, God, the enemy will do whatever he can to keep you out of the house of the Lord where God is moving. These are needed people in our congregation. Lord, we claim, we call back that which was stolen from Dorset and Kevin ten times over, Father. Replace it in the name of Jesus. And every other thing that come against your people, God, we break it off in the name of Jesus. And we say, let freedom reign. Let freedom reign. Let it rain from coast to coast and around the world. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor. There is a truth older than the ages. There is a promise of things yet to come. There is one born for our salvation. Jesus There is a light that overwhelms the darkness There is a kingdom that forever reigns There is freedom from the chains that bind us Jesus Say 
speak to the sea you stand in the fire beside me oh you are like the lion you bled as a lamb you carry my healing in your hands oh jesus there is no one like you jesus there is no one like you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. There's no one like you, Lord. Oh. There's no one like you. You are holy, 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 Lord. You are holy. No one like you, Lord. There is no other name, no other name who carries the power and the healing of our Lord Jesus. You were the word in the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. What a powerful name 
it is the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we stand in awe of you, God. Jesus, Jesus. Oh Lord, he's the King of Kings. There's no one like him. No one like him. No one like our God. No one who can save. No one who can heal. There's no other salvation. There's no other hope but Jesus. But you know what? He may be the only hope, but he's more than enough. More than enough. He's bigger than anything that's coming against you. Anything. I don't care what it is. He is bigger. He's more powerful. And he is able to deliver. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, salvation. Oh. His very name means salvation. That's who he is. Oh, Lord. You are great, God. There is nobody like you. Lord, we put all our trust in you today. We look to you and no one else. We lay ourselves aside. We lay our own abilities aside. We lay our own dreams, our own hopes, God. We focus in on you and we want to hear your voice today. Do you want to hear his voice? Do you want to hear God speak to your heart? Because he's speaking to you. Like Pastor David said, we sometimes we say, come Holy Spirit. And we're waiting for God to show up. You know what? God's waiting for us to show up. We've got that backwards. He's already here. He's already here. He's everywhere. We need to open our hearts and be delivered and become part of what he's doing. We need to stop asking him to bless our plans and say, God, what's your plan? And I will be part of that. He is the king. If we're going to call him Lord... He needs to be Lord, which means he is the one who rules. He is the one that we truly follow. It's about him and no one else. The splendor of the king, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. Mm. He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice And trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God Beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three and one. Oh, yes. Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb. Hey! 
God has given me. This is mine. No one, no one can take it away from me. The Bible says that not the angels, not anything in this world, nothing, nothing in this world can take away the love of God yes. from Amen. you. Nothing, 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 nothing. I mean, nothing in oh, this yes. world. And I loved what Pastor David, I think, shared last week or the week before that when a lion roars, he's claiming his territory. Yeah. He's saying, this is mine. This is, this is mine. This is mine. You know, Pastor, remember one time... Uh, a very significant event in our lives. I want you to listen. And we were driving up here. Uh, I think one of our final, you can be seated. This is one of our final trips up. And we were coming up the 99. And you looked at me. And you said, and she calls me dad. Daddy. No one is going to take this away from you. I, I was like, God put that in her spirit because I was like, in my head, I was having some fears and doubts about coming here because I've lost a lot. I've suffered a lot of loss in my life. Money, ministry, jobs, relationships. It seemed like the things that were, were good were taken from me. And that fear would never come, man, you know, when I was doing bad, it was when I was doing good. And there's someone here, you're struggling right now, Pastor, you're struggling with the fear that you're about to lose something. That means a lot to you. The Bible says perfect love casts out all fear. And Pastor, I'm reminded of that rich young ruler who came to Jesus wanting a word. He wanted more. And he went to Jesus, and Jesus said, well, he, Jesus, what do I got to do to get it? And basically Jesus said, well, you're going to have to let that go. You know what happened with that guy, right, Pastor? Yeah. How did he go away? Sad. Sad. He went away sad.
There's something that's yours that God has given you. Some it's, man, this joy. Some it's this back, coming back to God in relationship with him. But it's something, and it's been in your head like a fiery dart. It's almost too good to be true. You're going to lose this. It's going to be taken away from you. The word of the Lord is no way. And if you've been struggling with that, I want you to come, Pastor and I. We want to pray for you. Come on. Well, there's something that God had put in my heart to do. And I'm going to count to three. Oh, my goodness. Because God says, receive my blessing. I don't look at what you have done. I don't look at what you're doing or not doing. Receive what I have given you. You deserve it. I want to bless you. I want to love you. I want to encourage you. I want to show you all the wonder. Don't think or feel that you don't deserve my love. Mm. Because you do. Yes. Mm. Because you do. And I want you to claim back. I want you to receive what you have forgotten. I want you to claim what is yours, what no one can take away from you, and that is me, mm. says the Lord. That is me. No one can take you away from me. And a count to three, I feel God wants to hear <laughs> our cry. There's, it's burning in your belly. There's a cry inside of you. There's a burning inside of you. It's been stirring. You've been wanting to let it out, but you haven't been able to. And I'm giving you this opportunity right now to release. To release. And God says, I want you to shout, to shout, to shout from the top of your lungs, to shout where he can hear your voice. A shout of cry, a shout of Jesus, what's in your belly, we're going to shout it out to God. to three and we're not gonna stop until it's released until it's released it's a shout of praise it's a shout of worship is a shout is a shout of praise and worship one two
If there's still more, if there's still more, if there's still more inside of you, let it out. is pointing someone out to me Bill Bill God wants you to come forward Because he wants you to shout. says this time it's time to shout it's time it's time to let it out it's been in there for too long <laughs> and as one body as one body of Christ, of believers that believe in the power of God, that believe His word and His promises, that believe that He says who He says He is, we're all going to shout alongside with Bill. Because His breakthrough will also be our breakthrough his power will also be our power god is on the move one two bill here we go bill god wants you to give it to him bill three Bill. All of it, Bill.
everything. Voice of the Lord. I am with you, fear not. For I am with you, says the Lord. The Lord would say, Fear not. For I am with you, fear not. For I am with you, fear not. For I am with you, says the Lord. Fear not, fear not. For I am with you, fear not. Fear not. I am with you, fear not, for I am with you, says the Lord. Fear not, fear not, fear not, for I am with you, fear not, for I am with you, fear not, fear not, fear not. I am with you, says the Lord. The Lord would say, I have redeemed you. I have redeemed you. I've called you by name, right? For you are mine. When you walk through the waters, I'll be there. And through the flame, and you'll not, you'll not, you'll not drown. And you'll not burn. Come on, one more time. Say, it. fear not, fear not. I am with you. Fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. For I am with you, says the Lord. Oh, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. It's the word of the Lord. This one, Joseph, I want you to continue to play along. I say half of our the church that's here, we're leaders. We got all of our elders here. And I want to I want to unleash you to prayerfully find someone in here and go sit next to them and ask them how you can pray for them today. Come on, let's see the gifts in action. Speak a word of prophecy, a word of encouragement, a prayer. All of you leaders, whether it's CR leaders, whether it's the intercessory prayer people, whether you're pastors, whether you're just, man, full of the Holy Ghost and fire, but no one is going to leave here without prayer today. Come on, go find somebody. I release you now. I release you now in the name of Jesus. Come on, Sister Irma, let's go. Come on. Prayerfully. Sister Patsy, let's go. Sister Lydia, let's go. Come on now. Sister Kathy, let's go. Find somebody. Everybody praying with somebody today. 
Do you see anyone not being prayed for? Sister Katrina, let's go. Find somebody. Come on now. Be sure and ask them, hey, how can I pray for you if God gives you a word? Oh, right, chap, you're full. Let's go. Find somebody. Pastor David, let's go. Yes, come on, pray. Yes, oh, this is beautiful. church
sing it with me. I feel Jesus for my soul. I say let it burn, church. Fuego de Dios. Fuego de Dios. Fuego de Dios. I say we put an amen on everything that Holy Spirit has said and done in our midst. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Is there a Travis in the house? All right. Oh, my goodness. Está bueno esto? Oh, this is good. Oh, my goodness. Brother Travis, come on up here. Brother Travis, going to take up God's tithe and our offerings today. Hey, hey, you look like you're full of the Holy Ghost and fire this morning. All right. Well, here you go, Brother Travis. What is up, everybody? Come on now. I uh, just want to say hi to everybody at Facebook. How y'all doing? We miss you. We hope you come over here soon. Um, your envelopes are in the chairs, you guys. And please fill out one of the, uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, those cards if it's your first time here. You know, we'd like to get to know you better. Um, you can give online at uh, thelifechurchvisalia.com if you prefer to do it that way. Uh, okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read Proverbs 3, starting in 7. And it says, Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. Hallelujah. Honor... Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. Um, I just want to say that I've been tithing for quite a while now. Not, you know, not forever, but I've been tithing and, and I, I tested him in that. Uh, I, I, not, not that I tested him, but I can, I can look back at where I was when I wasn't tithing so faithfully and I can look at it now. And I don't want for anything. My, the money, and I'm not making any more money than I was. Somehow, it's enough. It's it's more than enough. I'm blessed. So I just I, I really challenge you guys to do that. And if you haven't been doing that, I really challenge you guys to do that. Um, ushers, if you can go ahead and uh, collect the offering, and then we'll pray over it. God is good. And how about that move of the Holy Spirit this morning? How about that? Yeah, give God a hand, man. I know for a fact healing happened. I know for a fact he moved in some lives right now. He moved in me. I know that. All right, come. right, let's go ahead and pray over it. Just extend your hands, you guys, if you would. Father, I just thank you for the faithfulness of this congregation. I thank you that they, they give their tithes and their offerings with a joyful heart and that they want to they extend your kingdom, Father God. They want to they move your kingdom further. We want to take back territory from the enemy. I just pray, Father God, that you would take whatever is in these baskets and multiply it. Yes. Multiply it and, and, and press it down and shake it together and let it do more for your kingdom than it could have had you not. I praise you and I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. No, we don't, we don't. Do we have announcements we need to make, Ma? Are we good? I think we're good. Oh, you want to do the first touch of time? Is it, come on up. Any announcements you have to make, Ma? Um, who's going to for such a time as this? All right. Oh, it's going to be amazing, ladies. Please, if you are interested, 
Um, she has all the information on the flyer. I believe I send it to everyone. Um, I believe she has maybe 50 uh, available seats. Um, the tickets are 30 bucks. Um, she is going to have for, uh, uh, I guess, for like an hour or two, she's going to have vendors. We get to, you know, kind of shop and, you know, fellowship. And after that, we go straight into our, for such a time as this, I'm very excited. Um, I know Irma's going, Nelda's going, and they're not here, but, and Loretta, and Honeybee's going. Woo woo! And, um, you know, so, I mean, if you want to come and be a part of that, it's going to be amazing, beautiful. Whoever went to the Bethesda, it was, it, it was amazing. And so I'm looking forward to that. Um, uh, our, women's, uh, our women's ministry. Let me tell you something about that. You know, just like I told you last week, thank you, ladies. You know, um, but God's timing is perfect. And, and, you know, it's just amazing what God is doing. And we do have, I haven't sent it to Bill, but we do have our, I mean, our women's ministry has launched. And it started two months ago. And, and I texted each and every one of you with, you know, wanting your, you know, your feedback on, you know, what do you think of a name? What do you think of a name? I'm still praying. There is a name that's like floating there and, and, you know, but I just want to make sure it's the right one for us. So, um, so on, uh, November, the, what is that bill? The 10th? Yeah, the, the men's ministry, it, the women's is on the 10th, right? Men and women are on the, on the second Saturday of the month. Oh, dang, I'm so excited. <laughs> yes, I knew it was the 10th. I just mixed up the month. So September 10th. Um, we have one of our own who's going to be sharing a good word with us. And I had spoken to her, and there was something she said when I was talking to her over the phone. She said, we all, all of us women, have an alabaster box. And only God knows what's in that box. And I said, girl, oh my gosh. I said, I want you to bring something like that. So our, 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 one of our own, that's Irma. She's going to be sharing the word for us on that day. And I am so excited. And it's going to be amazing. And there's going to be food. And, and there's going to be, this time there's going to be games. So we're going to have fun. We're going to do silly stuff. You know, we're going to be girls. There's still that little girl inside of us. I mean, not because, you know, we're, gro we're grown and we're doing grown-up things doesn't mean that we can't be silly we can be silly and and we're gonna allow God to to you know help us to do that and enjoy one another so thank you what That's, it's my sunrise. Now watch this. Yesterday, I shared this with, uh, with I've shared it with, with Pastor Eva this morning. Uh, I was in the car. We like to sit out there sometimes and just before we come in, kind of talk about what the Lord has spoken, been speaking to us. And I shared with her, uh, that I, I saw an image yesterday and it didn't make sense when I saw it. And the image was it was a it was a door. A door. And the door was swung open to like like those doors, it was door, and it was a white door. It was a right frame, and it was a door. 
But it was an unusual place for the door. Uh, because the door was like at the end of a cliff. And there was no walls around it. It was just an open door. And beyond the door, all I could, it was a vast ocean. And I was like, que curioso. And then I, a pastor this morning was telling me in the car that she, God had said to her, when it's spoken, and she said, I see the door. And I, this morning as I was sitting and thinking about my message, I had an aha moment. Has anyone here ever felt like you're stuck? I've had an amazing life. Let me just give you that. Filled with good, bad, and ugly. I embrace it all. It's all who has made me who I am. I, I don't, I wouldn't trade it because I love who I'm becoming in God. And I've, I've had amazing life of filled with experiences with God. I've seen and experienced the wonder of God in my life. I've preached in big auditoriums. I've done great revivals. I've seen literally thousands and thousands and thousands of people saved. And so I've learned over the years, I, I've become a person. And I've learned to do things a certain way. It's who I am. And the thought of doing something new is really hard for me. And I think, hey man, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I love my life. I love our church. I love you. I love my wife. I, I, I love my job. And yet, I have been sensing that there is something missing in my life. There's a dynamic. There's a freshness that just is not there, and I confess that to you. Or I would say, wasn't there. But it is right now. See, it makes sense to me. And things just came together like that. I had an aha moment when suddenly, like in the book of Acts, the light went on. There's a door. It's open. It's pointed that way. I mean, it's swung wide open. It's at the end of a cliff which can look dangerous, which I don't like. But if I jump through it, step through it, run through it, fly through it. There is a vast ocean. He is called the Holy Spirit of God that if I dive in, there is just no end. Who? I saw a little bit of it today. I 
I saw a little, and y'all say, man, Pastor Henry, you a little bit crazy. You loud enough already. You tell him you got another level? I thought I was there, Anthony. It seems like God wants to whoop, whoop, turn it up, whoop, 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 to another level. And man, I just, listen, church, because this was my conclusion of my message, but I'm putting it up front as I'm setting up. In case I don't have an end, you know, I want to be sure and get this in. I was sharing with the, uh, with the elders and with the people. I said, look, I know when God speaks to me like this, it's because not just wants to do things in my life, but because he wants to do things in your life. And nobody wants to admit that they're stuck, especially if, you know, you, you're spiritual. But you could be spiritually stuck doing the same things, same way, over and over and over and over again. And do it unto the Lord. I'm not saying. No, I'm saying this. I want more of what we experienced this morning. I want that. I want church unleashed, praying for one another, singing spiritual songs, calling people out, speaking words over people. There is a wind of Holy Spirit that is blowing, laying hands on the sick. You with me? So this started, this started a couple of weeks ago. If you've been, if you've been, and those of you out there here, hello, uh, the last month or so, we've been ending the services at the end of the services. Pastor's been playing the piano. A bunch of us have just been up here just praying, worshiping, and seeking God. And I just want you to know that uh, when you pray and you worship and you seek God, something happens. God shows up. No, sometimes he shows up, you know, when you're not praying, worshiping, and seeking God. You know, uh, because he loves you. But God is in this place. God is in this house. And man, I, 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 I Pastor, thank you for being obedient and calling Bill out. See, because Bill is, I think, what happened this morning, and, and Bill, you know I love you. I want to say this. And use just what I see in the spirit. I want everybody to look back there for a second. Right? Wave, wave, Bill, wave. And you see where Bill is? Bill is in a box. God saw him in a box. I wish that was Jack in the box. <laughs> but we got chap in a box. See, and sometimes that's where we wind up. In a box. And chap is great. He leads the man, he does the sound, he does the lawn, he does and does and does and does. But until this morning, we had a chap in the box. And God called him by name and said, Bill, come here. I don't know if y'all noticed, but Bill was a little slow in coming up here. (laughs) 
And church, I just want to confess that I've been in a box. I've been in a box. And uh, I confess that to you. You're my family. You know, that's where healing comes. And But um, I'm not in a box right now. So I'm getting ready, man. We are, we're going to start a spiritual journey together today. Let's go! <laughs> and I want to read a passage of scripture for you. And it's in Acts chapter 1. Chap has it back there. I'm so tempted to call him Chap in a box now. But he's not anymore. He jumped out of the box. God called him out and called him by name. But you know what? He had to get out of the box first. He had to take a step first. And that's usually how it starts. I believe the scripture says come near to God. And God will come near to you. See, watch. When you don't know Jesus, I'm looking around. I believe all of y'all know Jesus. I see we got more church people here. When you don't know Jesus, he comes and gets you. He sends what we used to call the hound dog of heaven, the Holy Ghost, to get you, to find you, to put you in a situation where all you've got is him. You're down so low that you only got one place to look, and that's up. And then whoop! But once you become a believer in Jesus Christ, you got to search for him. You got to find him. And so with these opening thoughts in mind, I want to read this passage of scripture. And we're going to be in this book for a little bit because esto está bueno, this is good. This is el fuego de Dios, the fire of God, the life of God, the spirit of God. This is where the church was birthed. And this is where life church is going to be rebirthed. Today. You write today's date down because today is our rebirth day. What's today, ma? 21st, write it down. Today is our rebirth day. The Bible says, Acts chapter 1, verse 1. This is Luke writing. Same guy who wrote Luke, the third gospel. He wrote the book of Acts. We're going to look at that. It says, the former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that God began to both do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, verse 3, to whom he had also presented himself alive after his sufferings by many infallible proofs. Boy, big one being the resurrection. Being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait. To what? Wait. To what? Wait. To what? Wait. To wait for what? The promise. the promise. To wait for what? The promise. All right. Wait for the promise of the Father. Which he said, you heard from me. Now, this is in the red section. That means Jesus is speaking. For John truly baptized with water. But you, he's speaking to his followers, shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Verse 6. Therefore... When they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, 
It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. Pastor preached on this a couple of weeks ago. Verse 8. But you, let me hear you say, but me. But say it again. But now turn around and point to two or three people. Say, but you, but you, but you. Come on, a couple of more. Come on, but you, but you, but you, but you, but you. Shatarabasanda. Boy, I had 37, 40 people pointing at me. I'm feeling it right now. But me, but you. These are the words of Jesus. But you shall receive power. Say power. 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 Wonder working power. That's an old song. There is power, 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 wonder working power. I won't make you sing it. I won't make it sing it. What? But you, that was the promise of the Father. You will receive power. How many of y'all could use some power today? I want more, I want more, I want more. You will see power when Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Verse 9. Now, when he had spoken these things, while they watched, while they watched, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. It was like a glory cloud. That glory cloud, when it shows up, is called the Shekinah glory. It's that dense presence of God. It's a glory cloud. You ever come in here and things are just kind of thick and you're like, whoa, that dense presence of God. I, I, I felt and saw it from up here today. You know, it was cool. Uh, I was up here and I was praying and you guys were all praying for one another, man. I was just enjoying the presence. And, and someone came up and prayed for me. And it's someone that doesn't usually pray. For people, at least not in public. I would put that under the category of signs and wonders. Amen. And prophesied into my life. I never heard that brother prophesy before, but he prophesied today. It's amazing. It's amazing. And he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. These were, these were angels, apparently. Verse 11 who said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Lord, add your blessing to the reading of your word. Church, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Pray, Father, Father speak, to my heart, speak to my heart. Change my life. Change my life. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, turn to the person next to you and say, Ta bueno esto? Oh, look, speaking in unknown tongues just like was promised. <laughs> wow, speaking in unknown tongues. Kara says, I saw you back there. In the passage we've just read, we see that there is a major shift. Say major shift. 
I mean major shift about to unfold. And I believe it's in this house today too. A major shift about to unfold in the lives of the followers of God. The Jesus who Luke introduces to Theophilus, which could be translated as lover of God or loved by God. He could have been a, we know that uh, he, could, he could have been uh, someone in government. He could have been uh, a Gentile. He could have been, but, uh, but lover of God for, the, for, for where we're at right now. We'll just say, he's, we'll translate his name literally and just say lover of God or loved by God, all right? Luke is writing to either person that wants to know more about God. Any of y'all want to know more about God? So, you know, let's just use it in a general sense because we're not sure. Luke is speaking to a lover of God or one who is loved by God. And what he is writing about, he, things are about to change up a little bit. See, this is the second time Luke is writing Theophilus. The first is the book he, he writes in the book of Luke, which is the third gospel, all right? The third gospel, right? Matthew, Mark, and John, right? And he says that in there, in that book, he wrote all about Jesus, the teachings of Jesus, the messages of Jesus, the story of Jesus, all right? He says he calls that, it, that was the former. He says it's uh, it, uh, the, former, the former book. But what, who he's talking about now, all right, is not the Jesus that we're about to see, the Jesus who was all man and all God. Because the Jesus that we're introduced to in the book of Acts already died, rose from the dead on the third day. He wasn't the same Jesus with all the bodily uh, attributes of a man. No, this was the glorified Jesus. This was the King of kings, Lord of lords, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who had risen from the dead. It was a different, he, had, he was all Jesus, but he was the resurrected Jesus. He wasn't the Jesus that gets tired. He wasn't the Jesus that needed to eat or needed to drink because he was in human form. No, this was a glorified Jesus. And I want you to get this because this is where whoop, the shift is taking place. Watch. The author of the book of Acts was Luke. The author of the third gospel. At one time, the book of Luke and the book of Acts were one volume, all right? It's just kind of flow together. The book of Luke and the book of Acts. It's not like two separate books. The book of Acts beautifully illustrates how the gospel spread from Jerusalem to the uttermost ends of the earth. If we didn't have... The book, uh, the book of Acts, I should say, if we didn't have the book of Acts, we would not know <laughs> what happened. And the story would have seemed to be over after the resurrection of Jesus, after the ascension uh, that Luke talks about in the 24th chapter. It's a remarkable story. Humanly speaking, Christianity really at that point had nothing, humanly speaking, going for it. Let me illustrate. One, they had no money. I'm talking about the church. Two, they had no proven leaders. Three, they had no technology, no laptops, no phones, no internet. The church that was birth, uh, coming out to Jesus, it didn't have a lot going on. Humanly speaking. Spiritually.
spiritually speaking, they had a lot going on. They just didn't know it yet. Just like some of you. In God's economy, you got a lot going on. You just don't know it yet. I went over this with Pastor Eva. She said, that sounds like Life Church. We don't got a lot of people. We don't got a lot of money. We don't got a lot of things, humanly speaking. But we got a big God. And the same way that God birthed something out of nothing, La Iglesia Primitiva, the primitive church, the first and early church. He's birthing something out of nothing here on the corner of Road 148 and Living Water. It faced huge obstacles. It was new. At the heart was a story. Oh, what a story. This was the, look at this was the church's story. New religion. God came from heaven in the shape of a man. Was born in a stable from a virgin. He lived a life and was a carpenter. Why did he come? To save the world. How was he going to save it? By dying. On a cross. Why? For the sins of humanity. Why was he going to die? Oh, because he was going to come back to life again. That's the pitch. That was so, <laughs> message was so out of this world. And yet, that's, you know, that was it. Humanly speaking, people didn't get that message. People didn't understand that message in the same way that some of you didn't understand it and some of your unsaved loved ones don't understand it. And when you tell it, they don't get it. Why? Because the natural man can, mind cannot understand the things of the Spirit or the things of God. You need the Spirit of God to understand the things of God. But they had everything going against them except for one. And he is the Holy Spirit, or God the Father, God the Son, and like we used to say it, God the Holy Ghost. Like I said, you know, we don't know really a lot about Luke from the New Testament. We know that he was a doctor. We can read that in Colossians 4.14. He was a Gentile. We know that by his name, and he was a devoted companion of Paul. We can find that in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. But he had impeccable credentials. In verse number 1, Luke writes, and I read it for you. He says, the former account I made of all Jesus began to do and teach. That's the former thing. Say former things. Let me hear you say, that's yesterday. All right? That's what he says. The former things, those previous things, there's life before the resurrection. Uh, uh, those things, former things, there's a, a shift about to take place from the former things to the new things. I want you to get that. And not just for them, but for you, the former things yesterday is history. Are you ready to jump through that open door? Whoop! Are you ready to jump off the cliff? Are you ready to jump into that vast ocean who is the Holy Spirit of God to whom there is no end? It could be, we'll call it the power of God. Are you ready? Come on, let me hear you say, I'm ready. Yeah. Woo! If you're going to clap, clap. No, that little soft clapping. Come on now. <laughs> Hallelujah! 
This is where it gets exciting. This is where we see the shift. Luke's gospel describes the beginning of Jesus' work. Acts, volume two, the sequel, <laughs> describes <clears throat> its continuation. That's what we see in the book of Acts is a continue. The story continues. It doesn't just end with the crucifixion, the resurrection. The, no, there is more. Let me see. There is more. Let me let, let me just let that settle for a minute. In Jesus, Travis, there's always more. You know, some, we got some saints here, man, you, you know, you, you've known Jesus forever. And there's such a danger in that. You think you know that, oh man, oh, I know that already. My other church, I used to preach, and someone would come after, and, oh, pastor, you, you preached that, you know, what, uh, uh, 10 years ago. Here, I got it right here. I know that already. You know? Do we got any, I know that already, Christians in the church? Oh, don't raise your hands. <laughs> you know? I always say, if the shoe fits, wear it. But take it off real fast. <laughs> Get rid of it. And don't put it back on. I'm doing that because I don't have no socks on. Acts describes the continuation. And the works of Jesus, how it continues even into today. There is no end to the book of Acts. You are living it today. You are a part of it today. That's how they did it in the book of Acts. In that church, they would pray for one another. Words spoke over one another. They were devoted to the apostles' teaching. We'll get to that later. They laid hands uh, on one another. They sang songs. They heard a spiritual song. That's what it was like. And let me hear you say, no, that's what it is like today. Come on. Come on, turn to somebody next and say, that's what it is like. That's what it is like. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I want to draw your attention to verse number, something we read right here in verse number two. It says, until the day in which he was taken up. That's the first account, all right? That's the former account. That was yesterday, right? After, now we're in the new, the shift. He, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. Let me hear you say, through the Holy Spirit. Here's the shift. The Jesus we're looking at now and that you're going to see in the book of Acts, the resurrected Jesus who we just talked about, the glorified Jesus, he is teaching the apostles. And how is he teaching them? Through. How is he teaching them? Through the Holy Spirit. The resur Now we know they're one father, son, and Holy Ghost. They are working together. There's a three in one and one in three. But you don't see Jesus just teaching on his own. He is relying on Holy Spirit. And if Jesus relied on Holy Spirit, guess what, church? I need to rely on him too. Hello? Anybody else? I need to rely on him in my marriage, 
in my relationship with my children, in my job, in my study, in my worship. I need to rely on him. Believe me, I've got a lot of canned goods at home. Spiritual canned goods. I've been in ministry almost 40 years of my life. I have preached literally thousands of times. Have taught, have led people to Christ, have counseled thousands. I've got a can for everything. You got a need? Oh yeah, I got this one. You got a, oh yeah, I got this one. Canned goods. Dry goods. Hmm. Hmm. Aren't God speaking to me? I need to have a greater reliance on Holy Spirit if I'm going to launch into something new. Amen. That freshness, Pastor, has got to come from Him. In the morning, in the noontime, at night, and I feel it. I am walking in that. Carry the door. Ooh, whoa. Oh, yeah. You going to come with me? Oh. Ooh. Everybody saw you. <laughs> Carrie, you're a beautiful servant. Love you so much. What you do for us. You know, what you have done. And uh, the way that you love on us through your ministry of hospitality and cooking. You're a blessing. You're a bringer. You're a blessing. You're a giver. You care about souls. You care about people. You're beautiful. I love you. you know? And you could not do. And uh, listen, I just want to pause there for a minute. And you, you have some major challenges in your life right now. Okay. And you've been tired. At times you feel overwhelmed. And I, I believe uh, that Holy Spirit, he just, he just wants to come alongside of you, Carrie. And he wants to take your hand. He wants you to know today that you're not alone. That you have a dear friend sitting next to you. But he wants to be an even closer friend than that to you. And this is your earthly friend. And he's your heavenly friend. And he sees your worry. He sees your fear. He sees your concern about your child. And he wants me to share with you, don't give up. Because in him you have a friend who's closer than a brother. And he, is, he has heard your every cry. And he's promised to give you power. And this morning I want you to know that a promise is only as good as the person that gives it. And he's promised you a lot, Carrie. And even right now he's coming through for you. He just picked you out of this whole group of people to love on you a little bit, to encourage you, and to remind you that you are a part of a supernatural family. 
and that you are not alone. So Lord, I pray that you would comfort Carrie in her heart and in her spirit and bring her child to you. In the name of Jesus. May he come. I don't need anything clothed in his right mind. Through the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the aspect of God that lives, empowers, and inspires us. If Jesus needed to rely on Holy Spirit, Life Church needs to rely on him too. And that's the shift. That's the pattern of the book of Acts. Total reliance on Holy Spirit. Watch what happens, church, when the followers of Jesus rely on Holy Spirit. And what he did, we're going on this journey together, Don, because what he did for them, guess what? He's doing for you. He's doing for you. I see the book of Acts in your family. I see the works of God, the miracles of God in your family. I see you filling that pew. When that pew used to be empty and not even you were in it. But he brought you. He drew you. He empowered you. He's equipping you. Whoop, whoop. And I'm sure you're glad. And we're glad too, Chantel. We're glad too. That's the book of Acts. That's Holy Spirit. Because that's what he empowers us to do is to become bringers like him. Do we love that family? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, whoop, 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 whoop. So, <laughs> so, uh, Jesus had said, made this promise in Mark chapter 16. Man, hey, it's getting warm in here. Is that me? It's getting hot. Hot. Mark chapter 16. Oh, I love this. I'm going to wind, start winding this down. There's going to be two parts. I'm going to have to come back and preach the next of this. There's so much going on already, man. The Holy Spirit has spoken so much. Mm. Jesus said, I'll start reading at verse 15. I think we have it up there. Yeah, verse 15. This is after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He's rebuked his disciples because they didn't believe when they came and told them that he had risen. They didn't believe it. He's already rebuked them. And he needs to remind them of some things. How many of y'all would agree that sometimes we need to be reminded about who we are? Reminded what we're called to do. Why? Because there's so many bad voices around us. There's so many naysayers. No, you can't. Or you're this. And blaming and condemning. And, and ourselves, our past, our voices that we hear. No, thank God he reminds us by his word and by his spirit. 
You know, that's what's beautiful about Jesus. Yeah, the disciples blew it. Yeah, the disciples ran. Yeah, the disciples were scared. Yeah, the disciples hid behind closed doors after the resurrection and were afraid of the soldiers and the Pharisees. They were afraid they were going to be taken down. But if you read that story, Jesus actually, he walks right through the door. He doesn't stop. He says, I'm coming to get you because I love you. Let me look at, I'll read verse 14. It's not up there, but just to set that. It says, later he appeared to the 11 as they sat at the table and he rebuked them, their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Man, I thank God he just doesn't, he doesn't stop, man. Yeah, I love what pastor said, that word he gave no man. is nothing can separate us from the love of God, not height nor debt. No angels, no demons, no things present, nor past. I love it. In the end, he fills in the blank. He says, nor any other thing. Let me hear you say, nor any other thing. No, any. any other thing. He wants to cover all the bases shall separate you, us, from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. All right. The rebuke is done. Verse 15. He says to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes, any of y'all believes? All right. So let me turn to the person next to you. Say, that's us. Right? He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Let me tell you, if you're a Christian, the Bible says there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Okay? That, you know, anybody kind of, hey, no, man, that's not what the Bible says. Mm -mm. The Bible says there's... And no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The devil condemns. Holy Spirit convicts. Different. Conviction leads to Jesus. Condemn leads to the devil. Conviction lifts you up. Condemnation brings you down. Different. One leads to life. The other leads to death. That was for free. <laughs> Verse 17. Verse 17, and these signs will follow those who believe. This is kind of the introduction to the book of Acts back here, right? In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. See, I don't know if y'all saw that and remember back there. We all do the emphasis of the tongues in the book of Acts, but... This back here, Jesus was speaking about it. That's Jesus, right? That's Jesus. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Come on, isn't that amazing? You know, that's the promise from the Father, through Jesus, by the Spirit, to you and to me. Are you ready to go with the shift? And say, I want more. It may cost you. It may cost you cool. Come on, you really think I enjoy playing a cowbell? Everybody's saying, hey, come on, man, what's going on with that guy? <laughs> Let me tell you the, sh uh, the, sh the, the, <laughs> the, uh, the shredding that God has d done in my life. The things that I've had to share, the person that, uh, so that to become more like him is a cause. We're going to be talking about that. Those disciples, they paid a cause. They all died martyrs. There's a cause. And we're going to come back. 
I'm going to come back to that. I didn't come to talk about the cost, but I came to talk about this morning the blessing and the invitation to come with me. into a new dimension. And some of you are saying, well, I'm already there. Well, come on, take my hand. I want to go with you. Because I can't do this alone. There's a word we use in recovery. It says you alone can do it, but you can't do it alone. I am open. I'm open to step out, step off the platform and go hold somebody's hand if that's what God wants me to do, to pick up a cowbell, to ask the dear friend, oh, what God wants you to kneel down and wants me to lay hands on you and pray for you. That is so out of my comfort zone. But I'm ready. People need Jesus. People need healing. I've always said Jesus is alive. He's still in the miracle working business. And he loves you today. All right? But his life is lived through you. His miracles are worked through you. His love is flowing through you. Chap, I want you to put up there, put our mission statement up. We, we're about to close, all right? Pastor, come on up to the piano. You have that up there? You're going to be seeing this a lot <laughs> in the next few months because I feel like we're on a mission from God. We have been, and but when we need to renew this. I don't need to share it with you. Joseph, play anything really cool. What we're going to do is all of us, all of us, all right, every all of us. That's if you, go, you want to stand with me, and I want you to stand with me. The same man, hey, Pastor Henry. Yeah, I'm ready to jump through that window with you. I'm ready to jump through that door. That one works okay, though. I'm ready to jump through that door. Man, I, I don't want dry goods. I don't want canned goods. I want fresh, living water. The one that Jesus promised, he says, out of your bellies. I got me a little belly, too. I'm working on it will flow rivers of living water. Right? But Pastor, I don't know, man, what song you're going to play out there, back there for us, but I want some kind of a dedication song that we can all just kind of sing it together as a body. And I want y'all to come. Let's stand up here. And those of you who are all right with holding hands, I want us to do that. We don't usually do that here at the church, but we're going to get this chain of grace going. Yeah, we're going to be doing some things a little bit different for Jesus. Pastor, you're going to come up here and hold my hand. Come on. Oh, look, Pastor's looking through his songs. <laughs> come on. Ooh. I'll lead y'all in one. I'll lead y'all in one. You can follow. It goes like this. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided, I have decided to follow.
chap in the box. I want you to pop out of that box and come on up here. Come on up, up here. Symbolizing we jumping out of the box. Come on, chap out of the box. Come on up here. Chap, I want you to pray us a prayer of dedication. And pray in faith as God would have you pray for Life Church. Because listen, I want you to look right next to you who's to your left and to your right. This is Life Church. All right? This is who we are. There's a, been a, pr there's a pruning taking place. There's a pruning. There's a shedding. There's a, and I thank God for it. He knows. God knows what he's doing. There's a few people we know are ill. We got Darla out of town. There's a couple people. But there is definitely a pruning, a shedding taking place. You are the critical mass of Life Church. You are. When I pray Life Church, these are the faces I see. From our oldest grandpa, Bob. I won't call out the youngest. One of the youngest right here. <laughs> we got to sing it one more time. Father, we just stand here before you. Together, the body of Christ at the Life Church Visalia. They're not all here today, Father, but you know who they are and you know where they are. And you, right now, Father, by your Holy Spirit, could just quicken in them these same things that we're saying here that we have decided to follow Jesus. There is no turning back. And we're going to do, as the scripture says in the book of Acts that Pastor talked about today, that we will do the things that Jesus did and that we will even do greater things. Greater things. Because his word commands us to do so. Oh, Father, I just pray that you, your Holy Spirit, would just overflow from each person that's here today. Each and every one from the right to the left, to the front to the back. Father, that your Holy Spirit would just move upon them right now in the name of Jesus. And pour out a blessing upon them right now in the name of Jesus. And that they would know, Father, that you are speaking to them right now. That you would tell them what they're going to do right now. And that the words that we sing in this song are not just words, but they are the desires of our heart. Because if it isn't the desire of our heart, Father, we have nothing. But, Father, you are everything. And we can do all things through Jesus Christ who gives us strength. So right now, Father, each one of us will say right now, follow after me. I dedicate my life 
to Jesus Christ to do his works, to bless people around my neighborhood, those that I work with, with a family, friends, and school, wherever I may find them, Father, that will have an ear to hear what you have to say. that I will bless them and share what you are doing in my life so that they know that you exist and that you change lives. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. breaks the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless